All right. So considering our question number four on the same exercise which we had, remember, we are supposed to determine uh, these values in the lower case, that is the letters that you're given. And we were told that O is the center of the circle. Okay. So if you are to consider this, the question is, how can we determine these angles? And remember, it's all about the theorems that we are going to apply. We have got uh, a line drawn from the center to the chord. So we know that this line is going to be at perpendicular. It's going to bisect, not just to bisect this chord, but it is going to be also at 90 degrees. So we've got the 90 degrees on this side. We also have the 90 degrees on this side bisected into two equal parts. So in this case, this angle E is direct, guys. There's no need for us to waste much time there. It's 90 degrees. Uh, that is a line uh, drawn from the center to the chord is what is a perpendicular bisector that it, it bisects the chord at 90 degrees. All right. Also, you can calculate angle B. Remember, you're considering a triangle, and this is a right angle triangle. We know that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So there we have got a 90 degrees. So it means angle B can be calculated from angles inside this triangle. So that is 180 degrees. You subtract all the angles that we see inside uh, 27 and also the 90 degrees. That means the remaining angle is our B. So that was going to be 180 degrees minus, uh, if we add up this, that is going to be 117 uh, degrees from the sum of these two. We've got 117 degrees. Then uh, subtracting this from 180 degrees, that means we're going to have a 63 degrees. All right. So that is um, our angle B. You're going to get a 63 on this one. Let's see what else that we can have. Uh, also, angle A uh, is a direct angle, actually. Uh, I don't know why we are not answering this. Let us just consider this now. Uh, this one, the chord P to Q, this one, this chord PQ. If you check properly, you're going to see that this chord PQ, this one, it is creating an angle at A. Take a closer look. It is creating an angle at A, also creating an angle at, at M. So what is the case? These two angles must be equal in size. So the angle at, uh, at M, which is 27, and this angle A, they are equally subtended by the same, same chord. So that means our angle A was equal to 27 degrees. Angle subtended by the same chord or angles in the same segment, that is uh, how we're supposed to have calculated this angle. So this angle here is uh, 27 degrees. All right. I want us also to consider what is happening in these triangles that we are given here. If we are to consider this much, we are going to see that we can also have this angle that is at C. All right, we can also have the angle that is at point C. All right, so many ways that we can apply this concept. Remember, we talked about uh, uh, the angles that are inside of a triangle before. And also, you're supposed to consider that a diameter, this one is a diameter from M to P, it is creating angle at Q. A diameter is creating an angle at Q. So we know that a diameter subtends an angle of what? Of 90 degrees at the circumference. If this is a diameter, it is going to create an angle of 90 degrees at the circumference. So meaning to say the whole of this angle Q was supposed to be equal to 90 degrees. The whole angle at Q is 90 degrees. So if the whole angle of Q is 90 degrees, what does it mean? It means our angle C is going to be 90 degrees minus uh, the 63 degrees at B. If you add B and C, you're supposed to get 90 degrees. So this is the idea there. B plus C is equal to 90 degrees. 
So it means C is equal to 90 minus angle B, and our angle B is 63 degrees. So that was going to give us uh, an angle of uh, 27 degrees at the end. So the angle C is uh, 27 degrees. All right, having angle C also, which is the same as angle A, so many ways that you could have just calculated this angle. We can also calculate the angle at G. All right, this G here, we can have this, or you can determine this angle also considering angles inside of our triangle angles inside of the triangle should add up to 180. So remember the wall of this angle Q, we said it's 90 degrees. So it means to have angle G using the concept that angles in a triangle, they are supposed to add up to 180. It's going to be 180 minus the 27 degrees and also the 90 degree, the wall of this angle at, uh, at the Q, which is 90 degrees. So if you are going to subtract this, you are going to obtain an angle of uh, 63 degrees. So this angle G is uh, 63 degrees. Also, there are so many ways that we could have used to determine the angle at G. All right. Let us consider the other part of our triangle. We also need, remember we said E, this one is 90 degrees. We are done with this one. So we need angle F. We are left with angle F and angle D, this angle at D. All right, consider the radius concept. We have got a radius at this point. We have got uh, a radius in this case. Uh, this from O to N is a radius. And also from O to P, this one is also a radius. So remember that these base angles are supposed to be equal, this whole angle here and this whole angle, they are supposed to be equal. And to have this angle at D, this one, it can also be determined from the angle at C. Why? All right, remember this concept. I want us to increase, or right, let's say uh, this way. I want you to see this. Uh, consider this chord. All right, I want you to see this chord NP. So the chord NP is creating an angle at O, which is the center, where this is our D, at the center. The same NP is creating an angle at the circumference of the circle here at uh, C. Remember, angle C is 27. So it follows that the angle that we have at the center, this one, is twice. It is two times the angle at uh, at the circumference. So that means our angle D is two times angle C, and our angle C was uh, 27 degrees. So that is going to give us uh, 54 degrees. All right, so we have got angle D, uh, 54 degrees. All right, then we are left with uh, angle F. So angle F also, there are so many ways that we could have calculated. Guys, there are so many ways. I just wanted to use your theorems and verify with the answers that I'm having here so that you see if you're in the right direction. Considering angle F, you see that there is a triangle there, triangle O and R. So remember that angles inside of a triangle, they add up to 180 degrees. Angles inside of the triangle add up to 180 degrees. So angle F, was simply going to be 180 degrees minus the two angles inside of the triangle. And which two angles are you talking about? We are talking about angle D, which is uh, 54 degrees, and angle E, which we said before it's 90 degrees. All right, so if you were going to subtract these angles uh, from 180 degrees, that is going to give us 36 degrees at the end. So angle F, was going to be uh, 36 degrees. So the angle at F is 36. Like I said, there are so many ways that you could have uh, determine the angle F as long as a theorem to be used. Can we apply that? So these are the typical questions that you might have in your syllabus. Let us revise as much questions as we can.